Hello my quilting friends! My name is Leah Day and welcome to this video on how I load my long arm now. Uh, so this is the continuum frame that I'm working with. I have added some extra things to it and I have been getting a lot of questions about how I load and how I've specifically attached my leader cloth to. Uh, now this is going to work for the Continuum or the Continuum 2 frames. Those are both rolling rail frames that you can attach an idler rail to, and that is what I've done here. So this is an idler rail. You can find another video on how I attached it to the frame and what it does. Basically it makes both of these rails stationary. I no longer have to adjust them for uh, as my quilt builds up on the back rail of the uh, frame. And I love that. I hate having to mess with my frame. I hate having to stop quilting and go do something. So I love having the idler rail here. But it has changed things just a little bit with my leader cloth. Another thing that I use is red snappers. They are uh, long arm backing clamps that allow me to clip the back backing to the frame so that I don't have to pin anymore. And that has also changed things a little bit because of course red snappers can be just a little bit bulky. And I also like to use these quilt clips here on this front rail. And those two things, the snappers and the quilt clips, they don't like each other all that much. So in this video, I'm gonna explain all of this and share with you how I load. So the very first thing is this top back rail is where you attach your leader cloth. And as you can see, I have attached the medium length leader cloth to this rail. I need the medium length simply because I found uh, the shorter length wasn't quite long enough. Whenever I want to start a quilt and have the red snappers uh, attached and inside of that rail, the shortest length that I used to have on this rail wasn't long enough. And I kept, I, have, I had some issues with that. So I found the medium length worked best and I put that on my back rail. Now I have attached this and as you can see, when you pull that leader cloth over, that's wrong side up. You know, I'm not able to see those lines. Well, I have red snappers attached, so I don't need those lines anymore. You may have a different situation if you are not using red snappers. So if you have a different situation, play with it. Uh, you'll be pinning, so you need to make sure that you can see that dotted line and that you can have that line and your backing fabric the correct way up and be able to pin. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter how somebody else does it or how I do it. What matters is if it works for you, you can see that line and you can pin on it. Now I will say I mostly uh, uh, load my frame now from the back. So when I'm loading that rail and I've already gone ahead and done it, I've already clamped to that. I usually stand at the back because this is quite a long stretch for me. I have long arms, but not that long, right? So I stand at the back and do that clamping action in order to get that backing fabric attached. And then I come around to the front side of the frame and you can see how I have already clamped to the front, but I am not actually using any leader cloth on this top front rail. Okay, so here on the bottom front rail, I have attached the longest piece of leader cloth. I'm not going to unroll it because it's not necessary for me to unroll it. Just take my word for it. <laughs> so this is the longest leader cloth on this bottom front rail. I have a, taken off the leader cloth completely and removed the Velcro from this top front rail. And it's still a little sticky. I need to get some goo gone going here and get all of that gunk off. But basically I use this rail to float. I no longer use this as a leader cloth rail at all. And the reason is the combination of the red snappers and my quilt clips when I'm floating a quilt, they just didn't work together. The red snapper, you can see how it is. It's um, kind of bulky in this gusset. That's the clampy part of it. And whenever that, and you know, I have my whole bar across it, it just wouldn't work. The, even with the, our bigger quilt clips, we have a two inch quilt clip that is pink. It wouldn't work well and I didn't like it. I didn't, it didn't feel right and it felt like the red snappers were getting a little tweaked in there and I didn't like that combination. So I personally found taking the leader cloth off of this rail completely, I haven't missed it, and using the longest on that bottom front rail works great. So whenever I'm going to load, I just put the backing on and I always load with the red snappers 
like this, I grab, you know, depending on the length of the quilt, I'll grab either three or five. And I just get my little clamps in and I bring that leader cloth up and I clamp that, I lock that rail so that it's, I can just bring that leader cloth up to the surface and then I can work on my quilt. And then I grab my nice long red snappers and I clamp all the way down. So that is how I'm doing it now. And I find that this works great. And because this is the longest leader cloth on this rail, as I'm working into the middle of the, like, let's say right on the edge of the quilt, this leader cloth has the length to stretch into the frame where I can then reach those areas. So the biggest thing with this, and, and really I get a lot of emails from quilters that are very confused and very worried about doing it the right way. It's not about right and wrong. This is, you know, this is like any quilting technique, right? You have to figure out what works for you, what works best. And you only are gonna do that by trial and error, experimenting, seeing what you like, and then going from there. And you know, that led me to taking off a whole row of leader cloth off my frame. I didn't need it. It was in my way, so it needed to go. And that's just fine. So I'm gonna get this finished clamped. I'm gonna go on ahead and roll it up on my frame. I'll load my quilt, and then I'm gonna show you how I use the quilt clips too. So here we go. This is what it looks like once I get my quilt installed. And I just use the base stitch to base down my batting and my quilt top. And I use the channel lock that's on the machine that locks it uh, into the position so that it can only roll side to side. It can't roll forward and back. And so that's how I make a nice straight line and secure first the batting and then the quilt top. So I have that top edge secured. Now uh, on this quilt, I, <laughs> I was trying to use a piece of backing fabric that I already had prepared and it's a little tight. I normally like a good five to six inches on both sides in case I run into tension issues while I'm quilting the quilt and I need to roll to one side in order to test my stitches. So this is one situation where I'm kind of breaking my own rule, but that's only because this backing fabric kind of perfectly fit this quilt and I really like the color to go with it. Uh, so I'm being a little bit on the, you know, I, I'm squeaking by, I'll put it that way, with this particular quilt. Now what I do with the batting is I just float it down the front rail. So this front rail, remember, has nothing on it, doesn't have any leader cloth, red snappers, anything on it. It just floats right over and I just let that drape on the floor. That's A-OK. -okay. It's not going to hurt anything. And then I smooth the quilt top down over that. Again, it's just the batting itself is grippy. You know, it likes to adhere to the fabric. And so it's all kind of sticking together already. And then I just smooth that out and grab my quilt clips. Now a pack of quilt clips will fit a 12 foot frame. So you get four in the pack and I just squeeze these on. They just slide right on. I just press and then if you want a little bit more tension you can kind of roll them forward and the edge of that quilt clip will put more tension on that quilt top and this is what you're wanting you're wanting a bouncy surface you do not want this to be super super squeezed down tight this is a problem that I see oftentimes with the hoop frames is trying to squeeze it down so tight that the quilt has no bounce, it has no play, it has no ability to move, and that can cause some broken needles. So you want it bouncy, bouncy tight, <laughs> you know, kind of like a trampoline. And that way it, it has uh, the ability to move and shift and not so much tension that it causes an issue with your machine. Okay, so one other thing that uh, I like to do is uh, I like to leave my ruler base in place. My needle is down here, so I can't move my long arm and show it to you, but my ruler base is always on my long arm pretty much. And that has a little bit of an issue with these side clamps. And I do use these side clamps now pretty much all the time. I do find that it does help to stretch side to side and it stops issues whenever I'm rolling the machine and, and stitching across the quilt from pulling inward. So I just clip this in place, but I find that my ruler base likes to hit that. So I just grab these half inch dowel rods and I cut these really long. When I have my smaller long arm on this frame, I didn't have to cut them this long, but this is 
I would say this is at least 24 to 30 inches long. And what I do is I just slot this underneath. So first I take the bungees and I connect them to the side of the quilt and they're kind of taunt. And then I pop that dowel rod underneath them and have it uh, resting on the front rail, front top rail and the top back rail. And that pops it up and that keeps those spongy cord ends, these little clampy things from impacting and, and hitting my ruler base and stopping the long arm from rolling. And you might be able to see this just a little bit better. Here you can see the clamps attached and I just take that dowel rod, slot it through and it just lifts them up nicely and evenly too. Now there's one other way that you can clamp the sides of your quilt, the sides of that backing fabric. And because we have extra red snapper from taking it off from this top front rail, that's what I've used here. So this is just a tube of the red snapper, um, tubey part that usually goes on your leader cloth. Uh, and I've cut that and then slotted in a piece of ribbon and knotted both ends. So this is what it looks like. It's not very complicated, but this is going to allow me to clamp the sides and get a nice, much more consistent clamping across this whole area. So again, normally I would have a wider piece of backing fabric to my quilt. This is right on my edge of my quilt, but normally I cut that just a little bit longer. And I take this tube and place it underneath the backing fabric and the batting. And then I just take these shorter clamps and clamp from the front, just like so. And you could use one clamp that goes across the entire length, but this works for me. There we go. And then now I have these ribbons that extend and this is what I'm going to clamp with my side clamps, just like so. And I've knotted the ends. So if these are slipping, if something's going weird, then I can always clamp right at that knot if I need to. And that way it won't slip. If you have some slippery ribbon, it can be a little bit of an issue. And then I still use my dowel rod. I take that and I just slot it right underneath the bungees that lifts that up that stops that whole edge from hitting my ruler base. And this works really, really well because as that ruler base comes over, there's really nothing bulky here for it to hit. Uh, so it's a lot easier. Again, I normally would have that four to five inches of extra backing and, uh, and batting uh, so that I'm not quilting right up to the edges of these red snapper clamps. This is a quilt that's just a little bit on the tight side. I will be completely honest, but I really love how this works. I love how it clamps that whole edge and really pulls it over. And I like that side to side tension. I've noticed it in enough quilts uh, and I wasn't using it when I first got my continuum frame, but I noticed with several quilts that as you do quilting uh, at the top of the quilt and come down, the sides can tend to kind of shift inward. And by pulling outward, you're really keeping it nice, straight and square. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. This is the way that I now load my frame, but this is a continually evolving and changing process. You need to give yourself permission and room to grow. With every quilt that you quilt, you might find that you need to modify something a little bit. I've had an idea to change this dowel rod out for a wider piece of wood with maybe some holes drilled in it. I mean, I have all these kinds of creative ideas, uh, fun things to play with, fun ideas to try. And the only limit is your imagination, right? So have fun quilting many, many quilts on your continuum, continuum two or rolling rail frame. I hope you enjoyed this video. Come and check out more at leahday.com frame. Until next time, let's go quilt.